Hi everybody, I am Jay Leonard J, and welcome to The Tone Lab. Uh, today I'm putting down the guitar, I wanna talk to you a little bit about mids, the mid-range of our guitar. Uh, something that I think as guitar players are completely obsessed with. Uh, the reason why I feel compelled to talk to you about it today is because very recently I did a video for New Neighbor where I attempted to get a really cool guitar tone without an amp. And I accomplished that by putting a really hefty mid cut at 750 hertz. Uh, when I put that cut in there, I think I confused a couple of my subscribers. And the reason why is because as guitar players, we're kind of conditioned to think that mids are a good thing. We always want more mids. It helps us cut through. It gives us clarity. It, it punches us through the mix. And I guess when the subscribers saw me cutting so many mids at 750, it kind of confused them because why would I do something like that when mids are supposed to be a good thing? And that's actually a really, really cool question and it got me thinking about the mids in general. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kinda sh talk to you about guitar mids from my perspective and uh, maybe it will give you a little bit of insight on how to master them and how to, how to use them to your advantage in your band and when you're at home, okay? When we're talking about mids, uh, we're pretty much talking on a frequency scale from about 200 hertz all the way to 4K. So the mids really takes up a huge chunk of the frequency chart. And if we were just to get all of those mids and just raise them up, like just boost them all, what would happen is our guitar would sound horrible, really, really bad. It's like if you're trying to make a cake and you put the same amount of every ingredient in the cake. When you put that thing in the oven and take it out, it's gonna be absolute garbage. And uh, the reason why is because, you know, when you're making a cake or making a good tone, it's about sculpting it. We wanna sculpt it. We put a lot of this, we put a little bit of this, and the EQ and our mids are exactly the same way. In my opinion, when it comes to a guitar, there's two spots I really like in the mid-range. One is the low mids, around 200 to 400 hertz. Uh, that is the wood section. That's where, like, you know, you wanna get that nice earthy feel, that really kind of like blanket of just beautifulness, that thump, it's all in there. Uh, another spot that sounds really, really good on the guitar is around the 2K area. Um, and that's kind of like a really forward, pushed up front, soloistic, in your face, detail kind of mids. Another great spot, those two. So we have kind of like the low mids and the high mids. And uh, that is really what I like to highlight when I'm a guitar player. Now, when you look at our favorite amps, like Marshalls and Fender amps, um, all of those amps actually show kind of a dip. Even when those knobs are cranked all the way up, we crank the mids on both those amps all the way up, there's still a big, a big dip. And that's actually really good because if you have like say your nice low mids, your nice upper mids, putting a big dip there, what that does is it gets rid of all the mushy mids in the middle and really highlights those two frequencies that we really wanna push forward and makes the guitar have nice separation, a nice fullness without having all of that muddiness and garbage surrounding it. So that's kinda how I like to kind of sculpt my tone when I'm by myself. Now let's talk about mids in the context of a band. You see, the more people we have in the band, the more people we have fighting for space in the mid-range, right? We have horns, we have uh, uh, keyboards, bass, vocalists, everyone's trying to get heard in this space. And the more instruments and more sounds we have on a specific frequency range, the less we hear. It just kind of gets all canceled each other out. That's why if you have a big, beautiful, full range guitar sound and you're playing in a huge band, you're not gonna be heard no matter how high you turn up your volume because all those frequencies are just gonna get canceled out by all the other instruments. The best thing to do when you're playing with a band is find a spot in that mid range that sounds really nice and that no one's really spending a lot of time in, narrow it in and push right up the middle, nice and thin. And that way, you know, you get rid of the garbage here, nothing to cancel out here, nothing to cancel out here, just beautiful tones right in the center. Uh, one thing I like to do with other band members is say I have a keyboard player, I'll tell him to dip the mid range in one place and I'll boost it there. And then, you know, I'll let them boost in another place and I'll dip so that way we both have a little spot in the mix to call our own. And when you do it that way and I have a nice, you know, kind of separation, you can hear each instrument beautifully and gorgeously and just lovely. So that's why I think everybody should have an EQ on their board just for that scenario alone. 
Well, that's all I have to say on mints. I hope you guys got something out of it. Um, there's a lot of different opinions about it, and I, I'm sure you guys have your own too, so please feel free to write in and uh, tell me what you guys think. Uh, that being said, I'll see you guys all soon. Take care and goodbye.